as we have announced over the last several weeks, that today, tomorrow, or the next day, or the next day, Jordan Ash is going to put all of her worldly possessions in her car and proceed toward off into the sunrise to Denver, Colorado for a new home. And a few weeks ago, I asked her if she would like to offer another message before she left. And she said she'd be delighted. So without further ado, Jordan Ash. Y'all make me feel very special. <laughs> well, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I actually normally have my even like good morning, everybody, written on here because I never know how to do an introduction in the moment. I didn't do that this time, so I don't have one. So we're just going to dive right in. We often talk about how we need to be careful with our energy what we're focusing on, and how we spend it. And that's true. We are responsible for how we handle our energy. We have been gifted with choice in every situation. Today, I want to talk about what that even means, though, when we say energy. And then understanding exactly what our responsibility is to do with that energy. So, if we're spending an entire morning talking about energy, it's important that we comprehend the term. When we talk about energy, we're talking about the vibe we give off, the state of our inner light or spirit, the mindset we are keeping and projecting, the mood we're in, the way that mood affects our behavior, what we say and what we do, how we walk and how we talk, and the message that it's sending to those around us. You know that we're all projecting our energy because we can often read one's energy as soon as they enter the room. With no words being exchanged, we can tell with just a glance if that person is feeling remarkably sad or if they're full of life and excitement or if they're scared or any number of other emotional states. We notice too that those emotions can often be transferred to those in that person's presence. There's the classic example of the life of the party. You know, everyone's having a decent time at an event, but it isn't until the life of the party shows up that things really get going. And their joyous energy is infectious and spreads like wildfire among the crowd. More people start dancing and letting loose and just enjoying the moment. There's the opposite end of the spectrum, of course, where someone is going through a rough time maybe, and they show up, and suddenly there's a bit of an awkward, tense setting, almost like everyone who had been having fun is now afraid to do so, because it feels almost disrespectful to the person that isn't in such a great mood. Be careful of that. Everyone is allowed to have their feelings, but you do not need to be guilted into following suit. Remember that old saying, misery loves company? Even when not doing so consciously, people will seek to justify their feelings by bringing others into that headspace. Why do they do that? Why do we do that? Is it because 
we don't feel comfortable with experiencing those feelings? Is it because on some level we don't think our feelings are valid? Could there be some guilt or other insecurity behind it? I don't know the answer. And I believe it varies from person to person and depending on the situation. But I think that's the first step in properly dealing with any emotion, just allowing it to be and recognizing that it's there. Knowing that we are all here having a human experience, and that includes the entire range of emotions for all of us. Which leads me to my second point. The effect of our energy on the collective conscious. It has been said, even in this church, that we need to be careful of our energy because it feeds in to the collective conscious of the universe, the collective energy force. I believe this is true. However, I also believe that this thought deserves clarification. It is not bad or wrong for you to experience a negative emotion. It is in dealing with our emotions that we begin to influence the collective conscious one way or the other. When we simply say our energy affects the world, we are at risk of people out of fear attempting to suppress what they perceive to be negative emotions, sadness, anger, hurt, etc. It is easy for guilt to build in someone around negatively affecting the collective conscious. And so they attempt to just sweep these feelings away as soon as they come up. But what happens when we do something, anything, out of guilt? Resentment. Not to mention, the original problem hasn't been solved. So now we're just compiling the issues in suppressing these types of emotions. Deepak Chopra says, if you try to get rid of fear and anger without knowing their meaning, they will grow stronger and return. And I agree. At the very least, it has been my personal experience and I would venture to say some of yours as well. So we can see that brushing the feelings away is ultimately not the answer. So how do we address these feelings? Well, the question holds the answer. Like I said earlier, we need to actually address them in a healthy way. It's okay to acknowledge the things that feel challenging to us, but it is our responsibility to do it mindfully. I believe that part of that is allowing yourself to feel it fully. Are you angry? Good. That's your mind and body telling you that you don't like something or that a boundary has been crossed for you. Certain feelings are often demonized. But what if we chose to look at our feelings simply as messengers, helping us to sort through what feels right for each of us as individuals? To quote Deepak Chopra again, I found both of these quotes when I was looking for another quote that I couldn't end up finding. <laughs> um, he says, and I'm slightly paraphrasing this one, be totally independent of the good and the bad opinions of the world. Have faith in yourself. So your body is sitting there, innocently trying to help you and tell you something, and then we get all upset because it's not the type of feeling that we want to feel, as opposed to just reading the message it's sending. 
We don't like the package, but we don't open the gift. I'm going to say that again. We don't like the package, so we don't open the gift. It seems silly when I put it that way, right? But it's understandable. We've been raised in a society that tells us to focus on the bright side. Good vibes only. And the ever invalidating, it's not that bad. For me, that's like when someone says to calm down. <laughs> right? Thank you. <laughs> because if anything, that only ever intensifies the problem. Because you feel what you feel. So go ahead and feel it. And surround yourself with people that create a safe space for you to do so. And you may need to momentarily separate yourself from people who don't or won't hold that space for you. That's okay. Flock to the people who will not judge your feelings. The ones who understand that we are all human, having a human experience, and that that does encompass all emotions. In that space is where you will be able to begin to move past and through the emotions. In their acceptance of you, in every state of who you are, you will start to learn to accept you in every state of who you are. You will have the space to work through the emotions once you've given yourself the chance to fully feel them. There is no time limit on that. This is a very, very mindful practice. What takes someone else a day to work through might take you months or years. As long as you are committed to seeing it through and working through the layers as they present themselves, because they will hit you out of nowhere sometimes, um, but as long as you are doing that and you're working through it and you're committed to it, you are positively contributing to the collective conscious. Because you are saying to the world, yeah, dude, I got some stuff I'm working through, but I am working through it. And in your fearlessness to face difficult emotions head on, you are encouraging others to do the same. It is only when we ignore our feelings attempt to sweep them under the rug and have no plan to work through them, that we are doing a disservice to those around us. I haven't once directly addressed the title of this message, um, which is sorting the rubble, but I think it's pretty clear. When we are broken down, when we are crushed, that is usually when we feel these tough emotions. Instead of turning our back on our collapsed castle of our lives, instead of attempting to sweep all the rubble under the rug, we just need to sort through it. Take the time to see where it is broken and pick it up piece by piece and have your friends help you. I hope you will walk away today with renewed vigor to embrace the challenges you are given, to work and grow through them, and to create a support system for yourself through a network of understanding and encouraging friends, as well as a continually deepening personal spiritual practice, whatever that looks like for you. I hope that you will embrace your feelings and know that in doing so, in being who you are and having the strength to feel what you feel, 
you are actively helping the universe, encouraging those around you, and contributing to the collective conscious in a beautiful way. Thank you.